Okay, John here, former programmer from Amazon. Uh, I noticed there's a lot of demand for people to get into the tech world, into the programming, the coding world with no degree and no experience. Uh, for example, when I go to TikTok and I type in how to get programming job, the first thing that pops up is how to get programming job, no degree. Or if I type in how to get um, coding job, there's it starts with no experience or no degree or without a degree, how to get a coding job without a degree. So there's obviously demand for people to get into the industry with no degree. Um, the problem with that, though, is that um, what ends up happening a lot of the times is people, they might um, try to get into the industry. And what ends up happening instead is, um, for example, um, for example, for example, there's this guy who said, spent $17,000 on a code boot camp for my wife and it led to no job. So there are, I mean, so even though there are YouTube videos of people who say things like, oh, I got a job at Google with no computer science degree um, and I just did cracking the coding interview and grokking the coding interview and system design primer and I just taught myself everything and I made a sample app and they were so impressed and they hired me with no degree and no experience. Most people, like honestly, even for the, even if you look at just the people who spend like $17,000 on a coding boot camp, only like 20% of them end up with jobs in the tech industry. Most of them end up, you know, not be getting into the tech industry. So really, it's really tough. So don't like, first off, don't take it super lightly. And second off, don't assume that, you know, just because it's possible to get into the industry without a degree that they will just ex be okay with you not knowing stuff that people who have a degree or a bachelor's degree know. Like you're expected to know the following stuff. The courses you have to know are as follows. The first thing is you'll want your introductory computer programming class. This is equivalent to an AP Computer Science A. And this is, or this at the University of Michigan, it's EECS 183, which covers your fundamental programming concepts like iteration, subprograms, functions, strings, arrays, lists, tables, uh, just, let's see, finding minima, maxima, searching, sorting, good program design, structure and style are emphasized, testing and debugging. So that's like your first course, your intro to programming. You can find like online Harvard has a free um, intro to programming class that they offer. And then the next thing that you're going to want to do is um, programming and intro to data structures. This one is in C++. Um, I personally think uh, Java is a little more appropriate just because C++ has a lot of legacy stuff from C that makes it a very big uh, very error prone programming language. Um, but yeah, then, you know, this will cover your, um, anyway, there's some C++, I guess C++ is useful because it teaches you about pointers, but so does C. You don't, I mean, you just need to know the basics of pointers. You don't need to go super into detail, but, um, yeah, things like, let's see, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, so then you need to know your uh, data structures and algorithms. And so that is an important thing. Me personally, for data structures and algorithms, I used, let me show you the book I used. I used uh, this book when I was a student, Data Structures and Algorithms in Java. But yeah, that's super important. You need to know about time complexity for the coding interview. And um, you also need to know, um, let me pull that up real quick. But yeah, data structures is really important. And that is something you would have to teach yourself if you're not going to college. Um, other than that, um, discrete math isn't super important. You just need to know the basics like and or not. Um, like, so like, for example, um, you need to know like, it's, it's not, discrete math isn't super hard. You don't, don't need to go super in depth into it. Um, but yeah, you, need, you definitely need to know um, you don't need to go super into deep. For most programming jobs, you don't need to know hardware super well, um, but you do need to know, um, you know, things like different algorithms. Like this, this class covers, um, let's see, divide and conquer, dynamic programming, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, it also helps. Sometimes you'll get questions on a. Um, sometimes you'll get questions on object-oriented programming, so like you might want to look up like object, orient like like. Um, Maybe head start object oriented programming. Um, head start object oriented programming 
book. Head first, op there it is. Uh, head first, object oriented analysis and design. So this is something you um, you might want to uh, go through because sometimes sometimes the um, coding interview will ask a question on object oriented programming. It's not super common. It's much more common from the for them to ask like you know solve this coding problem, but some 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 places do ask about object oriented design patterns. Um, but yeah, that those are like the materials that you like need to know um, for a coding job. The, the, definitely the data structures and algorithms, a little bit of object oriented programming. Programming fundamentals like arrays, linked lists, functions, data data types, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, those are the the classes that you need to get through on your own and teach yourself. And that can take you know a year and a half of your own time just to kind of get through all of that on your own. Especially if you are also going through the prep materials. So for prep materials, I gave uh, one guy on Reddit. I advice on what um, prep to go through. So this guy wanted to, um, this guy wanted to become, get into the tech industry. And I gave him advice. And that advice is here. Um, some, so he asked, um, what, what would you be, be your advice to someone looking to enter the field that hasn't gone to university? And I said, prove to prospective employers that you can do the job and have knowledge of the technology they use. Also, I don't recommend remote for your first job because you will get stuck a lot and have lots of questions. And it's much easier to get help from a senior developer when you can walk over to their desk with your laptop in hand than it is to keep sending them messages on something like IRC or Slack, which they can easily ignore or block. Google sometimes hires people with no degree, but they have to do very well in the coding interview, which most people do not pass. Read and, and do the book Cracking the Coding Interview by Gail McDowell to study. Um, that book, I can show that book to you. It is right. It is this uh, it is this green book right here, Cracking the Coding Interview. Uh, that is um, very that is a very helpful book to prepare. Um, and uh, read the system design primer. So if the system design primer is for the um, the uh, architecture, this the system design part of the interview. So that's the system design primer. It's on GitHub. GitHub is a website where people sh coders share code and documents and stuff. Um, but yeah, the system design primer is something that I use. The Google interview in involves both coding puzzles and system design questions. The book Designing Data uh, Intensive Applications may also help with the system design interview. I also heard that there are decent practice problems and answers for the system design portion at Algo Expert, uh, but that service costs money. I heard that Algo Expert mostly copies um, questions off of uh, coding questions off of a website called Lead Code. Um, studying with Lead Code is very important. Lead Code. Lead Code is a website to do practice coding problems. So Lead Code, the world's leading online program. A new way to learn Lead Code, Lead Code is the best platform to help you enhance your skills, expand your knowledge. So Lead Code is a place where you can do practice coding problems. So I'm going to add, oh, and do practice coding problems on, one second. Do practice coding problems on lead code. I'm trying to paste. I do not know why it is being so annoying. Oh, and do practice coding problems on lead code. On this website before your interviews. They often steal interview questions from there. Anyway, just giving this guy advice, but going back to the advice I was giving him, uh, let me get back to it. 
Anyway, so system design primer, the Google Google interview involves both coding puzzle and system design questions, data design, uh, data, uh, designing data intensive applications may also help with the system design interview. I also heard there are decent practice problems and answers for the system design portion at Algo Expert, but that service costs money. Huge companies like Google, Facebook, and Amazon are a little different from normal, normal businesses because they have their own custom technology that no one else uses that they use in-house. For example, Facebook has its own programming language called the hack programming language that nobody else uses but Facebook. So they expect you know people who get hired they hired to learn it. Um, these places, you know, like Facebook, Amazon, Google, emphasize the coding interview because it basically measures how smart you are, and smart people have an easier time learning their unique technology. Smaller places use less custom tech and would like you to know the tech they use beforehand. Would often like to know, you to know the tech they use beforehand. Often they'll use something like uh, C Sharp's ASP.NET or Java Spring or react or something off the shelf that's you know sometimes it's not open source sometimes it's something closed source like some oracle web logic server or something but it's usually some off the shelf not completely custom product anyway while you're learning tech and building demo projects i re recommend you pick the most common tech used in the industry because there are more prospective employers that are that use it for example the mysql database is one of the most common if not the most common database Java and C Sharp are two of the most common backend programming languages, especially for large enterprises. I personally think C Sharp is a little better than Java, but they copy a lot from each other. And JavaScript is the most common front end programming language. Angular, Angular and React are two of the most common front end frameworks for building single page applications, web applications that look like desktop programs, web applications that look, for example, Gmail. You might also want to join a Facebook group for self taught programmers, like this Facebook group. I just um, tapped it. So I am not a part of this Facebook group, but I saw it advertised to me on Facebook. But there are also lots of Reddit groups. Anyway, if you have if you have any questions, you might also want to join some subreddits like CS Career Questions. CS Career Questions offers a resume review thread once a week. I suggest you send you get your resume reviewed by someone there. Our programming, the programming subreddit, Learn Programming and Programmer Humor. Uh, yeah, I said that CS Career Questions has one day a week. They do resume reviews. A lot of companies use software that automatically throws out resumes that don't contain specific keywords they're looking for. Like if you're looking for a Java developer with Spring or Spring Boot, if that's what they're looking for and your resume doesn't have those words in it, it will get automatically thrown out. Big companies like Google, that's a typo, are less strict in having the exact technology they use because they use custom in-house technology that doesn't exist outside of Google, but they will expect semi-mastery of at least one or two programming languages. If you have any more questions, just ask. Good luck. That was, that was a typo. Oh. oh, and for a real tech job, you will need to know how to use the command line and how to use the Git computer version control, Git computer code version control system. This teaches that stuff and some other useful stuff. So this is called the missing semester of your CS education. And it covers how to use the shell, how to use um, the command line, how to use Git version control, debugging and profiling, security. So that's useful to know. So Git hooks into GitHub, which you can just Google GitHub, and that's a website, which is the website developers use to show off their code. Your GitHub can have pin repositories on your profile showing off the coding projects you want to show off. Put a link to your GitHub on your resume. Also have a nice LinkedIn and put your GitHub and stuff on there too. When applying for tech jobs on your resume, put a second email specifically for tech jobs and provide a second Google Voice phone number, which calls and texts to the Google Voice app on your phone because recruiters and scammers from overseas never stop reaching out to you once you give away your contact info. If your Gmail is something like johnsmith at gmail.com, you can add plus something after the John Smith, like John Smith plus indeed at gmail.com. And when they send email to that address, it will go to the John Smith at gmail.com address, but in the front field, it will say John Smith plus Indeed. And that way, if that's the email you gave away to the Indeed job site, you will know that the person sending the email came from that site, which is useful for keeping track of, you know, how many recruiters are coming from each website. Useful for keeping track of how many recruiters slash scammers come from which site. Be, be watchful, there are some scam jobs out there. Um, do, do interview the the people who you will be working with before you accept the job. Oh, and it's better to work on a coding project with another person because that teaches you teamwork and in real coding jobs, you'll be working with other people. There's a subreddit, our programming buddies, that you can use to find someone to work on a coding project with. So this is 
our programming buddies. Anyway. Oh, and when you're building your own sample app to show off to prospective employers, it helps to have a starter app to build your app from. The starter contains all the prerequisites to build an app pre-selected pre for you, so you don't have to select the, the which libraries and technologies to use. So I previously used this TypeScript node starter app, TypeScript, TypeScript node starter, and I used it because I prefer TypeScript over plain old JavaScript. Um, but that's just a personal preference. I use that to build this website, uh, uh, vacation rentals or sales, where people can search for uh, apartments. Uh, for example, this apartment is listed and there's a description and there's the rent of the apartment and people can look at photos of this apartment. And so this is the apartment. But yeah, it's just a website where people can, and they can create an account. There's a, a login, you can create an account. Anyway, so it's pretty basic CRUD style application. CRUD stands for create, reuse, uh, create, update. The C stands for create, the U stands for update, the D stands for delete. So CRUD uh, basically just lets you create a listing. So create an entry in the database, update the entry in the database, delete the entry in the database. And then my the code that I have, I, the web, website I, John Reed, built by modifying Typhoon Node Starter Seed App. So um, this is my code. So I deployed the Node.js app to a service called Heroku. So Heroku is what I used for the hosting of the server. Heroku charges me $7 a month for hosting, but they take care of maintenance and ensuring that the website is running 24-7. I once ran a website off of my personal computer and it was a pain to configure and connect to it. I like having some other service take care of all that stuff for me. I use the pre-selected NoSQL database MongoDB and the free database hosting slash maintenance with a small amount of free database storage provided by this site, mongodb.com. It's free MongoDB hosting for a small amount of data. But yeah, you can try and copy some stuff from me to make your own app to show off. Don't make your thing an exact copy of my thing. That that starter uses the TypeScript programming language, which is basically JavaScript, but with types added to it. Types made code maintenance a little easier for me, but they can add complexity if you are a beginner. Here is a great starter app that uses plain old JavaScript instead of TypeScript. This is the Hackathon Starter, which is specifically designed for creating small startups, startup apps quickly a boilerplate for Node.js web applications. And this provides um, this provides the stuff that um, you need uh, to build an app already pre-selected for you. So there's your heading, your themes, sign in with Facebook, Twitter, Google already provided. And there's APIs already provided. So you can hook into PayPal, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Venmo, whatever, already hooked in, ready to be used. So that's and that that's still being maintained, whereas the TypeScript node starter is not being actively maintained anymore. So you'll probably want to go with the hackathon starter if you're building your own app to show off to prospective employers for your first programming job. So yeah, one reason to choose that starter is that it is still being maintained by other people, whereas the TypeScript one has been abandoned. But yeah, if I were trying to build a website from scratch to show off, I would build it on top of a starter like one of these. All right, don't reply to this. I just wanted to add two things. For the system design interview, Google grokking the system design interview without the quotes and use that, those resources to help you. Some of those resources charge money, but you may be able to find a workaround site that contains the info without charging you. There are also videos on YouTube that cover sample system design questions. Also, if you want to build a quick website slash app that allows sign-in with your Gmail account and has integration with Google services like Google Analytics right out of the box, consider using Google Firebase for your backend and permanent data storage. Google Firebase is a backend as a service that locks you into Google, so it's not good, always a good choice for real businesses. But if you don't want to go through the hassle of setting up and paying for a Node.js backend server deployed to Heroku, which is what I did, it probably is an easier option. So you'll have to write the front end like the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and some front end JavaScript framework for building a single page application, a website that looks like a desktop program like the React framework. Um, but Firebase will take care of signing in your users and storing your data. Oh, and a few employers ask questions about object-oriented programming design patterns, but that's a more advanced thing that is used more rarely. For those questions, you might want to go through a book like Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software, or Head First Design Patterns, or Wikipedia has articles for each of the object-oriented design patterns. That being said, those questions are more rare, and lots of employers never ask them. The coding interview is much more common. Good luck. 
oh, and do practice coding problems on leak code before your interviews. They often steal interview questions from there. But yeah, that's the prep that I use and how I build a sample app to show off to prospective employers and how I prepare for the coding interview. But yeah, you know, it takes, you know, this process of going through all the, the textbooks for, you know, the different computer science subjects and building your sample app and studying, like that's a, that can take, you know, a year and a half to two years. So don't expect, you know, oh, I don't have a degree. I can just do this in a month or two. You know, there are advertisements for that, like, oh, you know, do this CS computer science boot camp and you'll get employed in a few months. But the reality is it's it's a lot tougher than that. But yeah. But yeah, hope ah, hope that helps.